this not an interesting piece of modern entertainment? It has everything. A story, open world, some gameplay, shitloads of bugs, sex, and even dildos in many forms and shapes. So sit back, maybe get fucked and listen in on this tale about Cyberpunk 2077. And to start us off, I'll go gentle on it, as there are a few genuinely good things about it. Well, before I start bringing out my horse-beating bat and pummel this carcass into a cutlet. The game starts off in the world ruled by corporations and downtrodden technology, as the namesake for the game. The overarching theme here is Cyberpunk. For many, images of Blade Runner, Ghost in the Shell, Deus Ex, and more crop up. Uh, basically, cyberpunk is a subgenre of science fiction, but unlike most typical sci fi settings, cyberpunk is not usually utopian, where due to technology things have gotten incredibly well. Think of Star Trek. No, instead it's dystopian, an opposite, the ruination and or complete demise of society and or humanity. Frankly, there are both ends of that here in CDPR's latest game, with hints of dystopia ruled by utopia, basically a mix of things. Developers indeed have done incredible work to portray society in more general view, as well as more detailed nuanced aspects that you see on every street corner. Generally though, the city as an open world is split more or less in three parts. The thriving center, where tech and people are plentiful. The slums, where the typical video game trash is piling on and on. As well as the outskirts, that basically portray the dystopian look. So literally, it's a checkbox world building. I absolutely love the look at times of the city streets as none seem to be the same. This attention to detail is not only expanded on the street level but also to the buildings up high. You see, in video games it's very common to just copy, paste, left and right, lots of assets. And sure, it's done here too to a great level, but it's done to flesh out the background and you can feel it while the base of everything and the obviously foreground gets the preem treatment. These generic props are often stacked in such a way that it creates a rather more unique feel than just thrown together just to fill the space. You do the city, the architecture, everything is so cool and then you look and see this. Yep. Damn it. And at this point you can start making comparisons to other similar games, be they in the same genre or only sharing one common trait. For me, those would be three games in particular. The one and only Skyrim, Fallout 3 and Deus Ex Human Revolution. But I'll get to comparisons later, as that's rather cheap to ignore the game on its own merits. Now this one shitty park kinda reminds me when I went to UK the last time. Jeez, no, I, I'm not kidding. This is literally how it looked. I'm serious, I'm not kidding about this. It looked this dirty. Of course, on the positives you can't dismiss by any stretch the story. And frankly, I dedicated a whole segment for it. So let's just say, no, Keanu Reeves' presence is not the highlight. In fact, it constantly is overshadowed by the bulk as well as the quality of other smaller and larger parts. In fact, this will be the only time when I refer to our silver screen star, as I do hate the whole famous people shoulder carried product. Yet I would be remiss to also dismiss it completely. So, in a word, Johnny's performance in voice acting and body acting acting. Perfect. I don't throw that word around just like that. Other than that, the story of the game in a gist can be summed up as a journey of self-discovery, a personal adventure as it has six endings, but that's not the point. What kept me playing the game was indeed story, almost exclusively. Much like CDPR's last big game, The Witcher 3, the small stories and that attention to detail as well as extra effort that you know that they put in everything they do, just drove me to do all the missions and side gigs and whatnot else. All of them, and I never do that for any other game. So yeah, I can safely say that the story is the selling point by a wide margin. Oh, and it also happens to be worth mentioning, the music. 
and while you'd make comparisons to other open world style games, with radios like GTA and Watch Dogs and what have you, it's interesting that most of the time the music actually brought out that particular cyberpunk feel of the city, and after a while I discovered a few tracks that I absolutely fell in love with. Though, as you would suspect, this would not be a hypercritical review if I did not take a stick and mercilessly beat every ounce, pound and liter out of this soil and brown synth horse. So enough of ego stroking. Let's go! Looks expired. You know, from a game that was hyped to high hell and back, the thing that some claim took 7 years, which more likely was 4 years of development and was mired in controversy of multiple kinds, you look around and you start to spot plenty of cancer cells. And oh boy, does this game have tumors, much like the brain of V. So, I mentioned attention to detail. Well, there's also the lack of it. While in more grand views the city is incredible and awe-striking, you start to notice a pattern. The game always spawns in a random group of thugs for you to abuse, in groups of three. The random little crime areas on the map are just basically three dudes. In fact, most areas are just three dudes multiplied by another number. Then there's the excessive amount of trash literally everywhere. And yes, I get it that this is cyberpunk and a corporation-led world of excess. But it gets quite old when even the most richest part of the town still is seen filled with shit. Literally. And another interesting aspect, the vendors. Well, in Witcher 3 they had their little dialogues indicating an extra effort where there was really no need for it. Here in Cyberpunk, dialogues, while present in part, don't feel special anymore. Mostly due to the fact that they don't impact anything, nor tell you anything. But what tells me most that the zero fucks have been given about the detail is when you spot that every vendor sells 50 of every crafting component. 50 legendary, 50 common, bullets are sold for one dollar each. No matter if it's a 50 cal sniper round or a fucking piss squirt for your water pistol. And basically repeat this for most other shops. Oh yeah, this is the best thing you can upgrade your gun with. Zero damage multiplier when attacking from stealth. Genius! I have two of them, by the way. Yeah, love it. See, in Skyrim, you could count on vendors having kind of a character depending on what they sold to you. But this haphazard thrown together shit really smells of two things. Laziness or rush job. No, oh, and of course, lack of balance too. If you wanted to put in an extra effort, then you would make sure that the stock that each vendor carries will represent the part of town they're in and unique skills they have. Which is funny, cause some Ripper dogs basically have that exact approach. Now tell me, how hard would have it been to, let's say, make a leg Ripper dog or arms dealer, pun intended, that all specialized in their respective augments, making them unique? And I'm not gonna get into the guns and the lack of detail there. Well, just yet. But no, it's fucking coming. Instead, let's take a quick and brief look at the bugs. Yes, the main laughing stock source for Cyberpunk's release and in fact cause of several controversies and backlash. Yep, the newest leather technology in gaming. Yep, that's the best leathers that they can offer, really? Come on. Let's start with the launch of the game and the console version at that. You probably already have seen the horrible loading and respawning prop and vehicle clips all over the net. Broken cars and stuff and so on and so forth and then there's this. <laughs> I think they forgot to model that one. Well, guess what? CDPR. While well, trying to make the game as accessible to gamers on all platforms, which is a noble and cool thing, didn't seem to have enough time to iron out the console version, and due to this, due to constant bugs and issues and so on and so forth on PlayStation 4, and later down the line on Xbox as well, was removed from their stores. Funny that while Cyberpunk was and is actually surprisingly close to how glitchy and bad Skyrim was and still is, the charm that Skyrim has is not present on Cyberpunk. But why? 
Well, it's probably due to overpromising, crunch, and what would some even perceive as lying. The silliness of glitches and bugs come as a sad reminder of a failure for this game. Even I find most bugs and glitches rather annoying than fun, as most either prevent me from doing something or outright not work. Though, not to say that it was completely laugh-free bug gameplay. <laughs> for days, folks. <laughs> oh, no. Speaking of silliness and horrible level of game development, what would the CDPR game be without the weird vehicles? First though, before I beat this dead horse too much, I do have to take a side and applaud the level of detail and unique, quite inspired look of every vehicle in the game. Yes, even this multiple number two looking Piece of shit. However, uh, the best card is always the Turbo R VTEC. So I called for my car and uh, this is it. I think it's burning too. Um. Uh, well, there goes my. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, my VTEC. Seems about the same as in reality though. Hmm. Hey. But seriously though, car design is nothing but beautiful, so mad props to the designs, as well as the fact that the car amounts as well as type spawn according to the part of the city you're in. Anyways, back to roach beating. At first, I expected the game to have a very squished and curated space where you can't really move about with the freedom of movement. Basically exactly what Deus Ex Human Revolution was. But no, as a surprise, the game is truly open world and that includes driving and walking, jumping and moving everywhere. However, once I got to pick up a car, I noticed two things. First, the cars are like some weird go-kart things that only look like cars and in reality are like floating caterpillar tracked abominations. The driving really feels weird and the wheels are just there for the show. Just try and do a turning circle, you'll know what I mean. You will notice that the cars are not driven by the wheels but by some magical levitation voodoo. And yes, yes, I know that this is probably a decision to compensate for something horrible in the environments and physics, but come the fuck on! And second, if there are cars, and Witcher 3 had decent horse racing, would there be racing here too? Well, yes! Yes, there is racing! And they tunnel you! It's shit! Oh, that's not the real suspension. Jesus, what the fuck is that? Uh, racing is weird. That's not a suspension. That's a pogo stick, there we go. I shit you not, the racing in Night City is the side mission with four races total. Four fucking races. Oh, but th that's not the stupidest part. The AI is so fucking bad. Once you have taken the lead, the fucking NPCs, not being programmed in the slightest to know how to drive, would crash and fall behind, far, far behind. So in order to make races feel, at the bare minimum, losable, all the opponents get spawned behind you constantly. What the fuck? How did he get in front of me? What the fuck? Fuck you, cyberpunk. Fuck you. Such a dick move! 
This is either because CD Projekt Red just could not code a fucking AI if their lives depended on it, or it was another rush job. And knowing that the horse racing in Witcher 3 actually was decent for what it was, I'm leaning toward the latter. Uh, speaking of maneuverability in streets, yes, it's super cool to see the guiding path on your minimap, but you know what's not cool? When the minimap does not zoom out properly. So basically in every self-respecting game, the minimap zooms out the more faster you go or get in a vehicle. But you see, in Cyberpunk, what it does is zoom out just enough to be useless. So there I am driving. I look down to check where the next corner is, I see either straight ahead, or in that rare moment I see a corner coming up right next to me. So I quickly look up and... This is fucked up! Now, let's take a breather and sit down. Let's look around and more so listen in. Hmm, well, for the amount of fuckers walking around and cars driving by, oddly, the soundscape of the city is toned down. Now, I know that in games, the more sound sources you cram into the scene, the more glitches and missing clips and beats you will start to hear. Or not here. I get that. Yet the city constantly lacks the proper sound and effects, and its detail to represent your environment. Granted, there are some really nice streets that you walk through and you hear some radios here and there or some music behind the doors. Yet the biggest shame is, in fact, this. I absolutely love the way the glass breaks in games, you know. Sometimes you can find the level of detail that developers have put in it. Like, for example, CD Projekt Red. Yep, I love that glass sound. It's a genius. And this is not the only instance where sounds are missing specifically. Yet, it again smells of unfinished baby diarrhea. In voice mixing too, some choices that follow the previous voice dialogue lines are just either volume different or post-processing different totally. This is very common at times when the character calls you and calls you again about the quest. Her and I go back to the Stone Age. Why should I trust you? Remind me again. She's burning! Quick, before she blows! May the road be kind to you, friend. Okay. Fuck, you hear that? Grayson, yeah! No, not that. Fucker shooting at me with my own gun. Let's go. Raffins, what about them? Expecting any trouble? All is. Posted sentries all around the camp. How's that not right? He's wrong in continuing to fight the symptoms rather than the. CD Project Red does this, basically. Let's get up and examine the thing that I was most afraid of. For the first time, FPS game makers did CD Projekt Red fuck up the gunplay. In a word, yes! 
Now, well, okay, at best it would be all mediocre. In general, I would rate the sum total of recall management sway, aimed on sights, reload speeds, damage, and all other aspects as subpar. Sure, it's usable, but the same thing can be said about Deus Ex, and that game has one of the worst gunplay mechanics I know. Then on top of that, you also include the melee combat, which on its own is a complete mess, when you basically have three strike combos before your character decides to take a breather and let an enemy have a go. Then of course I could mention how melee weapon play is incredibly redundant, when everyone and everything in the world has a projectile or ranged weapon. Every time after I pick up a melee weapon, after killing one enemy, everyone turns around and riddles me full of glory holes that they probably use later to pleasure each other with. Unless I manage a stealth kill. Yeah, this is why Doom's approach of you're invulnerable while doing the execution should be a fucking thing. Due to both sluggish movement and combat, and then pair it with god-awful dodging double-tap garbage mechanic that I cannot for life of me understand why it even exists, I highly recommend you never use melee weapons. And now, there are actually extra perk points in melee, so you kinda have to do that. Oh, fuck! As for the guns, fuck me. First, every pistol on your screen looks oversized. Second, the fire rate as well as reload doesn't feel snappy. Third, every pistol, including the super high caliber cool looking revolvers, act the same. Now I get it that just like here in Latvia where I live, the Polacks from CD Projekt Red only know how guns look and feel from movies and games, as we don't have this weird gun culture in our countries. So maybe that explains the lack of any difference between the fucking Glock 43 and the Magnum 55 revolver. Still, this shit show of what they call FPS combat is not yet over. Now, you know that old good joke from Skyrim where literally everyone goes and builds their character, even unknowingly, into a stealth archer because just simply how powerful it is. Well, I present you the new stealth archer. The motherfucking Volhack Sniper! Fuck me! And the tech weapons are intended to wall hack this too! I think the CD Projekt Red guys who designed this either did not know how to code a proper wall penetration, or had no grasp in reality or simple fucking physics! This also includes how anything but a headshot, literally obliterating a skull of an enemy, will most likely drop them into a neutralized state. Instead of bleeding out dead after suffering third degree burns or heavy lead and chemical poisoning. Now I get that some weapons are nice to have non lethal option on it for most missions. However, this also makes the guns feel less threatening. Instead of that 50 cal sniper sound invoking thoughts of complete bodily massacre, you remember that you're shooting a BB gun with pretend damage till the MMV fall down. And considering that there are even mods that make weapons into non-lethal, for the sake of not fucking up the wrong missions, why would you ever run with anything but that? Better yet, the game is so unbalanced that in many ways, any and all combat becomes trivial after level 10 or so. And the only thing that prevents you from going and doing missions in different zones is literally overbuffed NPCs due to leveling multipliers. And indeed, the word triviality will be touched again and again, like your output's port. But hey, at least the game looks awesome, right? At least you could say that. Ugh. Yep. Fall damage. Falling over animation. Yep, that's it's great. Sure, I really enjoy the vistas of the city and the color work that has gone into the sunrises and sunsets, the night and even the rain. The work and the tech are impressive that has gone into all this, and I'm not gonna lie. However, for all the beauty that there is, you will always find those shit-smeared Fabergé eggs left and right. 
I did not find a single weapon appealing throughout the game. Visually, not only they are a mess, but meaningless too. Sure, there are the tech, power and smart types of your usual pistol, another pistol, SMG, assault rifle, shotgun, sniper and more. And that would not be a problem to have all these weapons if they were not so disposable due to leveling system and abundance. But even then, the added random cosmetical paintwork does little to make weapons unique or interesting. Especially when there seem to only be a handful of cosmetic styles. Seriously, if you're gonna spam your game with endless of randomly generated guns, just copy the fucking Borderlands approach. Then after that, the hacking screen. Man, sometimes you open the scanner mode and the whole screen lights up, making you wish you were blind. Even the things you can't hack or interact with through hacking lights up, needlessly cluttering the screen, not to mention the ugly dark green overtone. And speaking of clutter, I did address how basically everywhere is filled with trash. Well, not if you step one foot outside of intended game areas. You see, I love, I truly love the fact that you can use the double jump augment and it opens up the world so much that it almost invites you to go and explore the best places, climb the highest buildings and so on. And the city is so well modeled too. Right, so I was running about on rooftops because I absolutely love that part. Um, I kind of noticed a couple of things. Now, of course, there's... Something like this, which I don't absolutely mind, you know, it, it, it adds the character, no problem. But when I come to something like this, y yeah, yeah, well, for the most part. But the problem with this awesome emerging gameplay lies in the fact that there's nothing. You climb the highest building, nothing. No unique weird places or lore aspects, just nothing, like in Skyrim or Fallout 3. Yet it gets worse. The more you climb and start to discover things, you realize that not only slide falling doesn't do any damage, but also that places like that train station from the trailer and other places have been relatively designed and some working things are in place, but it hasn't been fleshed out or even working. And that is an indication of scope and crunch that followed. And as we move on, we'll see a lot more of it. But while we're at the visuals, the engine is impressive for the game and even includes a little bit of ray tracing. Now, of course, I would have loved the full ray tracing mode, but, you know, we can't have Crisis of Today, I guess, again. Oh well. However, the biggest thing that bugs me is the lack of metrics. Like, you know, what the amazing and great id did for Doom and Doom Eternal. Now that's how it's done. Fucking blind! What the fuck was- <laughs> Oh no! And while some tech is amazing, the exact opposite can be said about the fucking UI! My fucking gods, these people were probably sniffing placenta drippings of cattle birth. Cause all the UI in this game is a complete joke. A bad, haha, I fucked your kangaroo kind of a joke. So let's start off with the inventory, the rudimentary inventory based off a of weight system like in Skyrim, Fallout and more. The choice here is understandable when every enemy drops at least one weapon. The problem with this UI is when you try to sell off your shit that you hoarded like some crazy cat lady. Every time you sell an item to a vendor, the UI flickers and this indicates that the game redraws everything on the screen from your inventory. Everything. Now, if it doesn't sound like a completely retarded and lazy move, then let me enlighten you. Now, back in the day, it used to be that for games, every screen got redrawn completely, but that required more and more processing and drawing time. To improve it and optimize it, coders realized that not every pixel needs to be redrawn and thus managed to squeeze out sometimes a lot of performance out of such old tech. Okay, here's another little interesting thing. Is this really best UI design or best UI coding you could have done? Really? This is pathetic levels of coding. Cyberpunk, on the other hand, goes the exact opposite route of coding evolution and redraws as well as holds needless sprites on screen, even though you don't see it. And that's why I suspect the flashes of redrawing stay longer and longer the more shit you sold to the vendor. In turn, this indicates amateur hour incompetence of a baby's first UI. 
See, the difference between a good and bad UI is the design. Anyone, and I mean literally any fucking chimp with two working fingers, fuck, even with his own dick, should, and more so, can make an inventory UI that does not chug like a babushka on airline food. And to me, this once more indicates a rush job or a lack of planning. But let's say the damn thing actually was made by someone with a brain. Would it be alright? <laughs> Is that a joke? <laughs> Fuck no, of course not. You see, Cyberpunk's UI suffers from what I call consolitis, the sickness that has plagued us since uh, early 2000s. Oh, you want to see all the items in your inventory on your 1080 plus screen where it would be convenient to see? Nope, two rows of five items for weapons, in a game where you literally pick up guns by the boatload every 30 seconds. Oh, you want to conveniently and quickly select multiple things and then press single button to dismantle or drop them? Fat fucking chance, Joom! Just look at how slow this is. There are just so many items in your inventory that it bogs down even the whole thing to disassemble. Oh, you want to select the amount of things that you want to craft, like the higher quality components, instead of pressing the button every time for a single one like an idiot? <laughs> yeah, right, you idiot. No way! Oh, you want to dismantle anything in the first place? Ah, oh, here's an obligatory hold a second before take an action. Oh, you have shit tons of crafting parts or upgrades to do? Guess fucking what? Hold a second mechanic all round! Just so the fucks with controllers get their stubby, imprecise fingers to do what their brains tell them. Gods, I love console adaptations, don't you? Oh, wow. Well, look who's being an elitist prick. <sighs> fine, fine. The point is that even disregarding the console shit mechanics to hold in order to achieve anything. In crafting, when you want and need to make bazillion items one by one, doing literally this can get quite incredibly frustrating. Now, take for example Witcher 3, where CD Projekt Red also had the similar mechanic in place. There you would not need to endlessly sit clicking and holding a mouse button or a controller, or your own dick, just to get XP and free perk points. In Witcher, you needed to craft the thing once. Maybe a few other things, but that's about it. A few times. We all can take and tolerate a few fucking times. Point is that UI is in no way made to work properly, nor has been designed, let alone optimized for ease of use or speed. Gods, I can't wait for community modders to actually show these fucks how it's done. Oh, and as the last visual annoyance, the fucking noisy pop-in render effect, you know, this stupid shit. This, from what I understand, is a sub-sample rendering technique where, for the sake of performance, the rendering of objects is, well, decreased in a manner of speaking, creating a blurry, pixelated look. You often can see this in clothing, hair, and most of all, bushes. I get why this method is employed, however, I absolutely dis despise the look of it, and I would prefer to turn it off, even if that would cause my PC to explode. Well, let's see, what's the next thing to beat? Ah, oh, fuck! Right, so well, let's talk about the biggest trash fire of the gameplay variety. The leveling system! Throughout playing Cyberpunk, I examined how it operated and what may have caused the exact good things and bad things. Well, especially the bad things. And the reality hits quite hard once you realize that the core system of the gameplay makes everything trivial. And so I proclaim leveling system to be the biggest piece of shit! So where to begin? Hmm. Well, I guess we should start with guns. I did say that gunplay and parts of it are pointless, as well as the visuals causing repetition overload. But you know what really makes me sad? The fact that if, say, you picked up a gun that you really liked, 
say even a legendary. After a few level ups, the gun will be far underpowered than the random hobo's ash scratcher you picked up from a dumpster. Then on top of that, you nuke that feeling with the realization that you will spend far more money, time, materials and effort upgrading the butt-fucking preferred thing just to keep it useful than picking up whatever lies on the floor and using that for the next 10 minutes. The guns are meaningless. They lack any and all personality and are just as disposable as the world it comes from. Funny how the theme of cyberpunk is rampant capitalism and excessive possession accumulation and the disposable nature of things. Even V in Brendan's side mission comments on the fact that repairing things is weird. You fix equipment. Seriously. People actually do that instead of buying new? With the amount of customers we get, find myself asking the same question day after day. Though I highly doubt that this was intended meta commentary from the developers. I mean, let's be honest, if that would be the case, then it would be weird that they would be fixing the bugs on this thing. But nevertheless, let's move on. Now, let's take a Skyrim, for example. Plenty of cheap, simple weapons and crap all over the place. But when you do find an iconic, legendary or unique weapons, you know they are special, both in design and in function. On top of that, no matter what level you are at, stats stay the same while your character perks improve what they do and how well they do it. But anyway, back to Cyberpunk. Next, right after the guns and weapons, come leveling for your opponents. Boy oh boy, the game becomes even more meaningless when you realize that when you start the game, areas you're not supposed to play in just yet are gated off by overbuffed NPCs that you can barely hurt, while the rest of the enemies are equally scaling with your level, no matter where you are. This is the crucial difference between leveling system in Witcher 3 and Cyberpunk, where in Witcher 3 enemies did remain the same level, so in starting areas when you got the gear and items and whatnot else, returning to do the side quest you did sometimes as a god. And the same thing goes with Skyrim and Fallout. In Cyberpunk, due to constantly scaling enemies and weapons and everything, the meaning of any numbers is all but gone. I've seen some dude bros brag that, oh dude, I made 100k damage onto enemy. <laughs> and I'm just sitting there thinking, the fuck does that even mean? And due to the scaling system, you can assure that all the opponents will pretty much go down in four shots or a couple of cyber hacks. And it doesn't matter if you're fighting Sticky McTwig Man or one of those steroid junkie animals. All of them will just keel over in four shots, no matter what weapon or what numbers you have. And at this point, I'm just wondering, why even bother with the leveling system? Even in Witcher, CD Projekt Red realized that leveling system can act as a semi-gatekeeping mechanic, preventing players from going places where they should not without proper progression. Here in Cyberpunk, it's just an inconvenience that causes about 90% of the gameplay to be meaningless. Best of all, if you like the customization of your character, this game will be a nightmare! Thanks to the leveling system, not just guns become useless every 10 minutes, but your clothes too, if you want to keep up a good armor rating. Oh, you liked your cool threads? Well, too fucking bad! The game tells you to get fucked, it's time to level up! And this, of course, is not to mention the absolute lack of game balance that the scaling brings to the game. So we know that guns have no meaning, levels have no meaning, aside from opening some extra ways of doing things, and most of all, enemies have no meaning. What now? <sighs> well, we got long ways to still go. <laughs> <sighs> about the immersion sims and stuff. Well, let's start with what is an immersive sim in the first place. Basically, it's a game that allows a freedom of choice, so most of the time it's an open world type of a game, or at least has elements in it, and through multiple types of simulations, it offers through mechanics as well as abilities and functions of the game to accomplish a certain tasks or getting around them. So let's say in a video game, there's a door that you need to get past. An immersive sim game would offer uh, multiple choices and ways to get through or past it. You could acquire a key, be that by stealing, buying it, or perhaps convincing an NPC to unlock it. Or perhaps you could break it down if you had skill for it. Or maybe there's an open window that can allow you to get past it. 
or perhaps the game would allow you to burn it down even though the developers didn't originally intend that to be a possibility even. And that's where one of the key things of Immersion Sims comes from. Emergent gameplay. A player-made creative solution to the problems presented. Or rather the game allowing these creative solutions to take place place in the first place. This is where basically a bazillion comparisons will come into play from such titles as Deus Ex, so why don't we get this out of the way? Is Cyberpunk an immersive sim? On the first glance, developers have worked notably hard in most places to offer different routes of potential ways to solve or accomplish something. The problem with this is that the more often than not, the optional routes or paths either are incredibly hard to find or are arbitrary. Throughout playing the game, I could distinctly feel that the game wants me to play one way, almost pushing me to ignore all others. And this is where, laughingly, I can literally say Cyberpunk is a poser! And sure, yeah, there are multiple access routes to many of the mission areas. But let's say, like in Deus Ex, can you talk your way out of the quest, or around it, or complete it through talking alone? As a matter of fact, there is a mission that will showcase how badly Cyberpunk is trying to ape and be immersive sim while it's actually not. And the side mission's name is Fixer, Merc, Soldier, Spy. But what about emergent gameplay? The game constantly pushes you to do either combat or heavy stealth, which thanks to AI is basically meaningless, as you will learn in just a bit. And moreover, the dialogue choices are just extra fluff rather than actually impacting portions. In fact, Witcher 3 had more impacting dialogue choices or the timed dialogue choice that would affect something or the conclusion of the quest. So despite the marketing of Cyberpunk, this is not an immersive sim. One of the biggest hallmarks of immersive sims is emergent gameplay, a player-made solution to a designer's one. Uh, for that, well, Cyberpunk uh, fails completely. Though Skyrim, for example, is not an immersive sim, it has more hallmarks than Cyberpunk at times. My favorite example is prop manipulation, like that famous trick of putting a kettle on a shopkeeper's head so you can steal his shit. In Deus Ex, the prop manipulation, though in a smaller degree, still allows some interesting approaches as well. Yet when it comes to Cyberpunk and prop manipulation, the only thing you can pick up is a body, and even then when jumping out of the window, this happens. Hey, seeking new markets for their stock. Time being, does it seem he's having much luck? In England, Excellent. Equilibrium sometimes demands sacrifices. Contract closed. What the fuck? What? What the? What? Oh my! What? And at this point, do I need to make comparisons to fucking Dishonored? And speaking of Dishonored, let's go into Stealth and Cyberpunk. Now, being sneaky is a big part of these types of games, so having at least a passable stealth system is important. Now, how does stealth work in Cyberpunk? Oh my god, this is the stealth system. I'm stealthed right now, hidden. Now I'm not. Now I am. Now I'm not. Now I am. Oh my god, are you fucking kidding? Are you truly fucking kidding me with this? Yeah, about as complex as that. <laughs> it's a travesty, not a system. Not only enemies take shit time to spot you, but also paired with some implants that slow time when you're being spotted, you can run around in neon lights and no one will bat an eye. On top of that, I noticed that not only sounds at random times cut out or simply aren't there, the sound does not play any part in stealth. Yes, that's right. And sure, a grenade explosion or unsuppressed gun sound will trigger a response, but not a melee swing hitting a floor. What is this stealth? Like, what is this stealth? Oh, oh no, what the fuck is this? Not even jumping around or rummaging in trash will raise an eyebrow. And that's quote-unquote good! 
because if we actually were able to pick up props and throw them for destruction, we would immediately realize that it's fake stealth. So there goes another meaningless aspect of the game. Great, what else? Oh yeah, you like stealing in open world games? Be the lovable rogue? Well, fuck you too, cause there is no stealing and only specific access cards or items marked by developers will raise an enemy's ire. But that's not all. Now we have to talk about the AI, and I don't mean alt. However, I would be remiss if I did not mention one good thing I have been enjoying more than all others. The hacking thing. No, the data access point minigame is pretty simple and due to ample time also kind of meaningless. No, really the joy comes from the quick hacks and the ease of use for them and sometimes a complete dependence on them. So UI wise, it's surprisingly nice. Anyways, where do I start with the AI? Well, in stealth, the AI is just literally standing around and staring at each other, longing for death that may come in the form of a magical vibrator. Oh yeah, by the way, there's a weapon like this, and trust me, that's a big bonus. Anyways, the AI's search patterns and behavior in stealth is just so weird, especially when you quick hack them. Sometimes they shuffle towards you a little, other times they stay still, but distractions? <laughs> well, those are done by hacking exclusively. Funny thing, you set up a thing to distract enemy, but the enemy won't go to it. And only when the enemy and the distraction device is marked by a white outline, it will work. The Fuck! Oh, right, I forgot the sound system does not play part in stealth. Right, 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 I forgot. Also, distractions only work on one enemy, even though in vicinity there are more enemies. Nope, it's only one per device. My fucking god, I can't take this shit anymore. Stealth is a joke. As for the world of cyberpunk, well, it's filled with two types of AIs. One that has a chevron over its head, indicating an enemy, and one that doesn't. Oh wow, if only walking streets would be this easy to spot the cops or enemies. Best of all, if you stand too close to an NPC with a chevron, like the cops, they will get suspicious for no fucking reason, and then attack you. No, because why you will the put that away. Not? I know this is fucking America the game takes place in, but the only time I visited the US and day, security guards were at least pretty nice and cool. Though I can't speak for cops. But you know what? What else? What bothers me the most is the normal NPCs. The randomly spawning ones that are just there to fake liveliness. In reality, they are meaningless. This is what I'm speaking of. Maybe there are NPCs that are interesting. They could be. But this is the shit that happens. Hi there, Luna the Night City. In fact, there was more AI coding in NPCs in Postal 2 back in 2003 than in Cyberpunk 2020. No one cares if you have a gun out, only when you aim it, or when you jump on someone. Then everyone loses their shit and runs for their lives, in the same animations and fucking pattern. The fuck is this? But you know what's the biggest, saddest missed opportunity? CDPR could have just simply copied Watch Dogs so well here. By scanning people, you would reveal their kinks and crimes. Then we would be killing all the child and animal abusers. You know, the usual stuff. Fuck, even a random street encounter wouldn't have gone amiss, like in Skyrim. Yet the game goes the opposite way, sometimes even preventing you from doing things like shooting a crowd. And let's be frank, we all want to do that at one point or another when we are bored with the game, and I ask you, what the fuck has happened to the mindless murder in fucking video games, damn it? In fact, NPCs are so lifeless and boring that you don't even want to go on a killing spree like in GTA 3. At least there you would do it for money as they would sometimes drop some if killed. At least that made it some sort of a risk versus reward. But here you even as much as touch a civilian wrong and the cops start coming out of the woodwork. So what's the fucking point? Then on top of that, killing cops gives you literally no reward. Nor can you quick hack them. Well, I guess it's a good thing then that you only need to run two city blocks in a straight line to get away from them. Or go talk with the shop owner to lose the four star wanted rating. 
No, seriously, the fuck is this? You see, I love the city streets, but unlike other open world games, fuck even counting Witcher 3, the streets, the NPCs, their animations or random actions just feel pointless. Then you realize that streets are empty, because they might as well be ghosts. And then there goes another part of the game that becomes meaningless. How fun! The AI is so bad, if you ever stop and look at NPC actions during combat, you will see the most basic bitch approach of making AI. The absolute most simple actions and patterns are presented here, which again turns another part, a crucial part of the game, meaningless. You know, I just realized that I did not mention difficulties and what happens if you choose any of them. So. At first I started playing the game with absolute hardest one, just to see what it would do. And sure, yes, enemies will kill you in about 4 shots just like you would them. But due to the previously mentioned garbage UI, the difficulty of this game might as well not exist. So it's fucking meaningless as well! In Witcher 3, if you went with the higher difficulties, it actually got really interesting to start to negotiate pay for the jobs, as that was important too. And you needed that cash for upgrades and what else. And you had to constantly be smart on which potions and oils you used for the enemies and how you approached them. All that added to the way the game played. And here we come to the most heartbreaking subject, the distinct feel, smell and sound of a rush job. Oh, and did you know that CD Projekt Red is gonna give free DLC for this game? Putting back, oh I'm sorry, uh, putting in new features uh, that totally were not cut during the development and rush and crunch of this thing? Hmm, where have I seen this? Where have we all seen this before? Do I highly doubt, and truly highly doubt, this is gonna succeed just as <coughs> that other thing? Oh, so the train station is not just an abandoned feature, huh? How nice. <sighs> Frankly, I wanted to conclude this segment by saying that another year of delays would have been okay for the game. Now I'm thinking two years would have been more fitting. Jesus fucking Christ. Throughout writing the script, I'm questioning how much delays there would have been needed before Cyberpunk would have been at the level of Skyrim broken but cute silly. Instead of the current meaningless gameplay, missing sounds and glitch galore, with literally story being the only one that holds up this mess. There is something to be said about the software development and crunch and rush jobs and too early releases and more, but somehow gaming industry manages to accomplish what no other field of software dev does by encompassing all the worst horrible aspects of it in a single go. During Witcher 3 development, the reported crunch already existed under CDPR's roof, but that was dismissed by the company at times. Still, the results were often a strong counter to the crunch allegations, but I wonder, will that fly today? And of course we have the low branches of evolutionary and education systems saying, but it's a video game, that's not like a real job and shit. Oh, but you don't need to focus on the bad things, you guys. Why do you ruin my fun? But I don't associate the real human value with this piece of entertainment that I consume like cheap. So you know what, you know, fuck those pricks. See, I get it that the last minute prep work and polish happens with pretty much everything out there and is expected in a certain amount, but what I'm talking about here is overworking your staff with 6 day 80 work weeks and telling the media that it's, it's optional, you know, for all. What bullshit is that? The reason I chose to invoke a little bit of Jim Sterling today is that clearly this shit does not work. Fuck, you can even draw parallels to Johnny's character and CD Projekt Red themselves, where they think that the ends justify the means, where disregarding others is just a way to accomplish shit. So, in the words of Nintendo Shigeru Miyamoto, a delayed game is eventually good, but a rushed game is forever bad. So, once more, I say, Cyberpunk should have been delayed at least two more years. Well, we have it out now, so there's no way back. So, what about the story of Cyberpunk? What about this thing that keeps this shitshow mess afloat? 
Oh, and yeah, of course, spoilers all over the place and so on and so forth. So if you quit now, don't forget to subscribe and, you know, check out the Patreon down below. After all, Patreon is one of the reasons why I keep on making these massive things. So if you want to continue supporting something like this for many other uh, projects, even a dollar a month is really appreciated. The story opens up with V having an average day in all three backgrounds. Now you get to see the city in its glory, and indeed, you have to praise the cinematic work of both actual cinematographers as well as the level designers. The world is filled with character at every step that invokes numerous feelings. You progress through your first mission, the first taste of the city and life in it, as you detach from your background in two of the cases and default to a street kid, more or less. You get a quote-unquote big job offer that promises everything for you, but of course, everything goes to shit. You lose everything and now get stuck with an unwelcome passenger, a sort of a devil on your shoulder while slowly dying. And now, the game begins. Will you waste your remaining days fucking about? Will you seek a way to survive and live on? Or will you give in to the devil and its schemes? That's basically the gist of the story. Without a doubt, the main story of Cyberpunk is certainly amazing. In video game terms, I would even put it as one of the top contenders of interactive storytelling. All that amplified with little details and nuances and attention to details, somehow making you want to relive all of this again and again. Story-wise, the game opens up with your new companion, Jackie, and, well, he's basically a video game dog. By that I mean he's very likable and set up as the emotional heart. Then, to get an emotion out of you, they kill it, as this happens almost with all dogs in video games and movies too. This usually is done to kick off some revenge story, <coughs> a, a la John Wick, I Am Legend, Call of Duty, and the list goes on. Sometimes, though, stabbing emotional heart is done with a greater purpose, and CD Projekt Red has done it before in Witcher 3. Not to spoil it any more than that. In Cyberpunk, Jackie is sort of a symbol for childhood innocence and naivete that, once stripped, invokes a change. And while that is also the overall theme and message of the story and endings, the story of growing up, of maturing, a change in life and, to a point, acceptance too. The story of Cyberpunk deals with human inner conflict, a personal story which is usually very emotional. CD Projekt Red has done a great job of portraying it in basically all characters. On the visual side, there's actually one little interesting side note, a little wonderful effect that I haven't seen used really anywhere else that much. So in the cutscene environments, when you focus on the character, the background gets blurred a little bit, emphasizing the focus on the character. However, if you look away, let's say on the city or whatever, out the window, the foreground gets blurred. And it's just that little nuance and touch that kind of adds to the whole scene, if you will. Then there are obviously the great motion capture animations that help portray all of this. The way certain characters stand, like Johnny, or how they walk, sit, the little idle movements. Cyberpunk, while not the only game that uses these details, to me really solidifies a rather new era in video games. A time where stories could really rule the entertainment, as cinemas did before that, and radio before that. Games no longer really seem like these simple, mindless let's do that's that waste time but something greater and having witnessed the growth and transformation of this medium is incredible but returning to cyberpunk as always the amount of effort put into even making some of the side stories is impressive the so-called romance optional quests are quite interesting and sometimes go to some dark places too though granted are not really breaking any new ground here and the sexy scenes are surprisingly short and almost feel like set dressing as for the conclusion and ending of the game, well, each one is interesting. I truly recommend playing through the first time, choosing and intending to keep your choices, not just reloading the save and seeing what other options do, if anything. I found that to be kind of a ruination of my experience. Oh, and I'm happy to say that unlike in Deus Ex Human Revolution, there is no obvious ending Tron 3000 at the end, where you basically kill the final boss and get presented with three fucking buttons to listen to some bullshit voiceover as the ending. Gods, I hated that part of Deus Ex. But I suppose if you water it down, Cyberpunk actually does have that.
So here is the bad. Technically, no matter what you do in a single save, you can end with at least five endings, of course, with reloading. The difference is that once you choose the path of one ending, you get to play it out. And even then, sometimes there is a potential twist you can do. So for that alone, the conclusion of the game is far more interesting than, frankly, any other game that I've played through. I really applaud CDPR for crafting a top-notch narrative. But if I gotta pick holes, I will do so. Just, you know, remember what I said. So let's begin! The small stories. You see, the game is filled with little encounters, little side stories that don't pop up as your active mission. Unless you go to that designated place and, you know what? I love it! Take for example Skyrim, Witcher, Fallout and more. All games have quest givers, to which you go to first, pick up the quest, then go do the damn thing and return for a prize. Well, this is a modern age, communications are easy and it's so nice to see that being acknowledged. You just need to go to a place and the quest giver gives you a call with the details. It adds to that organic free roaming more than ever before. This actually encourages you to explore the world more, rather than taking the same back and forth road to the quest giver. However, these small stories are often disappointingly small. In some cases, you just arrive, tell someone off or defend them for 10 seconds and that's it. The story is done. Frankly, it almost feels like a waste of time and effort at times. Like that talking sentient gun. It's funny and nice, but after you pick it up and talk with it for about 20 seconds, that's it! The gun's yours and now nothing comes of it. Or when the cops are beating on some corpo guy, you just tell the cops to leave him alone and that's it! Or maybe the better example, the smoking crotch guy. At least with him, you need to drive the fucker to a ripper and along the way there are some scripted events happening, which are quite nice. But in comparison to Witcher 3, even the small stories took some time to accomplish and meant something a bit more. And there's also the lack of consequence after the side story is done. Very rarely did your choices come back up and matter down the line. Sure, there were a few characters that did pop up here and there as your partner NPC choice or what else or allowed you to skip some portion of the game. And then I was thinking, maybe it was actually better to take the worst option so that you can get XP for level ups. Frankly, all of these are just nitpicks. The bigger issues with the story side of things comes in the tone. So, let's take our charismatic devil on the shoulder, Johnny. He's cool, he's rebel, he's eccentric, he doesn't give a shit, and so on. So, let's take a moment and listen to the music that plays during his moments. Not done yet. Still need to feed this to their subnet. Fucking knew it! This was never about corporate colonialism. This was about your groupie output, wasn't it? No, you wouldn't understand. I've given you four fucking minutes. Chopper's not gonna wait one sec longer. Door lock breached. Arasaka sons of bitches get coming. Love you, Spider. Sweet Jesus. You hear that? Do you hear what they're playing? Each to their own, Johnny. That's what peeps with bad taste always say. Don't know what he did to deserve what's coming, but his music taste is reason enough to drop it. Exactly right. Tonally, the music is a complete opposite of what Johnny is. You see, in movies you will often hear musical themes to either solidify or invoke certain feeling for the character. Fuck, take John Wick as an example. This theme from the game would fit John better than Johnny. The music is cold, almost sad, but invokes the feeling of calculated drive with obvious Asian hints and instruments. Johnny is not that at all. In my experience, there is another track that would have fitted the character far more perfectly. And in fact, it sings about him exactly. Resist and Disorder.
At this point, I'm not sure if developers wanted to juxtaposition Johnny's character with this music, and sure, on the first glance it works, including the cold coloring when you play him, but as you examine and break down the guy, it makes little sense, and not to mention the fact that Johnny himself hates this kind of a music. Still, what about the story? Well, as said, the story overall message is about the change, maturation and acceptance of said change. Cyberpunk chooses to go with a more human internal conflict story, and while that is executed very well, I'm left wanting something better. You see, for the most part, science fiction tends to deal with something a lot more impactful, meaningful and thought-provoking. Science fiction is often used to deal with philosophical issues and ideas, something that is greater than ourselves, while using this fictional outlandish concept of future and science. Take, for example, our deus ex human revolution. In part, it deals with transcendence, evolution, knowledge and control of the masses. What counts as a human and machine? What is the tipping point and how this impacts both us internally and externally? Or maybe take Blade Runner. That deals with what constitutes as human in the first place and what does not, in simple terms. Or maybe take Ghost in a Shell that has remarkably numerous similarities with the game. Yet Ghost deals with mind and body dualism and self-identity thanks to cybernetic advancements. Unfortunately, while having so many opportunities to expand on the story and invoke a bit more thought-provoking concepts like is a construct actually human, is an engram actually you or something else, is an AI living form of life or just machine of our design, a deterministic bunch of if statements. Nope! Cyberpunk just immediately accepts constructs, engrams and AIs as valid, unceremoniously losing any and all philosophical potential. The human conflict drama stories are more emotional, yet I would count them as lesser compared to a more cold and thought-provoking philosophical narrative. Sure, yeah, there are some small world-building notes in cyberpunk and commentary on society like excessive corporate action, consumerism, even sexuality that cyberpunk's subgenre is part famous for. Now. I'd like us to talk about the most exclusive and highly sought after implant on the market today, Arasaka Corpse Relic. But maybe we ought to make sure our fair audience is up to speed. Karina, what is Relic exactly? In a word, if you could. In one word? I'd say immortality. Immortality? Really? That's right. Relic allows you to transfer the consciousness from a dying person, finding a new home for their soul on a transferable chip. This person, they'll never leave your side, a companion forever with you in your own consciousness, just a- Child, child, think for a moment about what you're saying. This relic is an abomination that feeds on human misery. It is an unnatural likeness. A golden calf born by false prophets. Arasaka speaks of preserving the soul, but they can promise nothing more than a heartless, mindless algorithm speaking with the voice of the departed. What's more, this technology is just another tool of coercion and corruption. Only the wealthy and powerful elite will have access. But those are almost like random side comments, not a real attempt at food for thought. I guess what I'm saying is, Cyberpunk chooses to throw away almost all philosophical and meaningful storytelling in order to get an emotion out of you. And to that, it starts to kind of feel cheap. Sure, I still like it, but I know that there is so much more rich ground to accomplish more. However, it's also worth noting that in Cyberpunk, due to this rather decent amount of options for responses, you basically pick and choose what your character is, while the game still needs to try and get you to basically the same ending. And that makes the whole story a somewhat, and sometimes even extremely muddy mess, due to the inconsistency in the choices you have picked. Frankly, I don't think there's really a middle ground between making multiple choice options and a singular vision story play out well. Sure, endings are varied and tries to compensate for a little bit of that muddying of the waters, but it never really succeeds.
In the end, well, there has been a lot to say about Cyberpunk, and no doubt I could go into it even more, but as is, it has been a massive journey yet again. So, in case you need sound bites for the lack of capacity for nuanced view, Cyberpunk as a game is a massive failure in every single gameplay aspect. There is no two ways about it. The leveling system is the biggest piece of shit I've ever seen. The AI is so simple I can't even call it intelligence. Stealth is a complete joke. Level design, well, though thoughtful at times, offering multiple routes and in grand scale looks incredible, making me just want to run around and jump and explore, the lack of things to do or find really just makes these options kind of meaningless to you. Music, on the other hand, having so many styles present will offer you at least one track that you will fall in love with. But sound design, on the other hand, now that reeks of half-finished rush job as it cuts out or is completely missing. Gunplay is suboptimal and works enough to not be annoying, while having complete wall hack ability that questions the original intent of difficulty and challenge for the game. Vehicle physics and driving is a joke again, the UI is so annoying and downright bad that I don't think a real coder has ever looked at it. Hacking is surprisingly the only nice thing about gameplay-wise, I liked well enough, but worst of all, the crunch and clear failure of CDPR's management just tells us that they don't think it's a bad idea to rush and release a game early, overworking their stuff on top of it. And I get it that they overhyped the fucking thing and that's a failure in marketing too, but let this be a lesson. This shit does not work! The only thing that keeps Cyberpunk alive for me is excellent story, which granted could have had bigger message and could have been more thought provoking, but even still is head and shoulders and knees and toes above other games. Pair it with excellent world building and potential to explore things with some augments, I probably will be replaying it till I get my fill. But I'll stop there, unlike with Skyrim, which seemingly is equally broken, but not disappointingly broken, and I replay it from now and again. And I genuinely think the Cyberpunk, if it had been delayed for two more years, could have been the same beloved darling as Skyrim, but this launch may have ruined it forever. It's a pretend immersion sim, and now it most likely will be up to modders to keep it alive. Of course, there's always a chance for a No Man's Sky-like resurrection, but I have my doubts. Still, is this game worth picking up? Well, if you are a fan of Keanu Reeves, sure. If you like a great story, also sure. The replayability of story is actually a decent aspect too, but there's really very little game in this game. Expect that. And once your suspension of disbelief is broken, as soon as you realize how shit the AI is, both on enemies and normal pedestrians, doubt you will have much fun afterwards. So much hype, so much potential, so much failure. But it sure looks pretty, right? Oh, they die.